gonna define what I feel as an entrepreneur and we can repeat this together. So I might need one of you guys to help me read this in a little bit here. We okay, can I can help you. Ta -da! It's magic, I know. All right, here we go. I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna break this down first and then I'd like us to all to read it together. One, I have a question. Yes. Why are there sticky notes covering some spots? Oh, because it's a mystery. I like to create a, a surprise effect when I, uh, when I teach okay. things. Okay. Well, wow. I'm high tech W. Hey, <laughs> you're so awesome. Pollution X. I'm going to call you Pollution X from now on. It's so awesome. So here we go. I will. No, just call me high tech W. High tech W. Okay. Okay. I will. You got it. So you guys ready? I will profitably solve a problem that people experience which I find interesting and that I have the answer uh oh superpower to solve that people are capable and eager to pay you. And over here it says, please take my money. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's read this together, shall we? I will, I will profitably. profitably. Okay, good. Someone can, can someone read it for me, please? I will profitably solve a problem that people experience in which I find interesting and that I have the superpower to solve that people are capable and eager to pay for. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Uh, well done. Well done. Um, so if you look at this guys, what are some of the keywords? Help me underline some of the keywords here. What is here? Some of the keywords. Profitability. Okay, great. Solve. Great. No, I mean problem. Yeah, great. What else? Superpower. Ooh, very good. Pay for. Pay for. Awesome. Anyone else want to, any other words that you think we should underline? What do you think, Ninja? Capable and eager. Ooh, capable and eager. Excellent. We got one more. We can find one more word. Interesting. Excellent. There we go. So today we're going to break down the parts of this and, um, and then we're going to talk about how, you know, you guys could do some stuff. So you guys are, you know, really young and I asked about a fundraiser, right? To raise money to help with pollution. So guys, I'm going to tell you a bit about my life. Okay. I came to Canada in 1975, a long, long time ago. And I came and I left my country, which is Vietnam by boat. And after 10 days in the sea, my heart stopped beating. And my parents, my mom, thought I was gone. And she was really sad, but then some kind of miracle happened and a big US carrier rescued our boat and a few other boats and they shocked me back to life. And then they took me to Hawaii and I had another heart attack and they put me back to life again. And since I've been alive, right? And then I came to Canada and in Canada, I went to Quebec City, Montreal, of course, I'm here in Ottawa. And everywhere I went, I was really supported by, my fan, by all the people in our community. So I never really thought about money or business until I was really 20 years old. So a lot of my friends, they like, oh, I knew I was going to be a business person when I was six, seven, eight years old. I was thinking about making money. Well, guess what, guys? I have to admit that I didn't even think about making money when I was a kid, I didn't think about any of this stuff. So you guys are amazing to be where you are today. And so, but what I did do was my father taught me how much our community has helped our family. So I always want to give back. He always encouraged me to give back. And even though I had a heart condition, I had a lot of health problems, my mother taught me to always be positive, right? And so that's why I'm always like, always full of energy. I always love to help people. And so I dedicated my life 
to going after medical school and volunteering to help all the charities that help my family. It's like Junior Achievements, United Way, uh, you know, YMCA, there's so many amazing charities and the hospitals, the children's hospital also was a big part of my life. So that's all I did guys, nothing to do with business, right? But here's the crazy thing. I did not know I was building entrepreneurial skills. What I was doing was I was raising money for charity. I want to raise money for, look, you guys recognize this here? What's that sign there? What's that? Chio. Chio. Yeah, Chio, right? And then over there we have United Way, right? And we have a whole bunch of charities that's behind this board too. And I would raise money and I would always ask myself, if I spend the same 10 hours next week, how could I raise more money? Oh, maybe it could bring more people to help me. Maybe I could change how I sell my sponsorship, right? And then when I was 23 years old, I was able to do 10 events and each event did $100,000, which is what's 10 times 100,000. Can anybody? That's so y'all get a total of $1 million. Oh my goodness, who are you? <laughs> is there a calculator I in your head? I you. Amazing, wow. That's, that's incredible. So yes, I ended up giving $1 million to charity. I had a job also. I had some small side businesses, but nothing big. And then one day a guy saw me on the news. There's a man named Max Keeping. He's, a late, he's passed away, but he's a dear, like big brother to me. And he put me on the news almost every week because I was just always raising money for charity. And one day this guy named Dave came up to me and he says, Tuan, why are you not an entrepreneur? And I thought, what do you mean? Uh, I'm just a guy who works in an accounting firm and I do a small business on the side uh, and I raise money for charity. And he says, dude, you raise $100,000 per event. That's so brilliant, that's entrepreneurial. How did you do it? And I would share with him some of my, 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 my approach to how I raise money for charity. And he said, dude, that's business skills right there. You're an entrepreneur. So funny, like sometimes you don't actually have to do a business to develop entrepreneurial skills. And entrepreneurship is not about for profit. It's about really solving problems that are interesting to you, that you could use your skills and make a difference and get people to pay you for it, right? So let's break that down. And that's my life story. But now, of course, I have several businesses and uh, I love being an entrepreneur and I love it when young people are interested in entrepreneurship. So let's move on to the next page here. All right, boom, boom, boom. I have a question. Sure. Why are the sticky notes a different color than the other ones? Good point. It's because I ran out of the other color. Uh, I kind of miscalculated. Why didn't you just buy a new pack of that color? Because I don't want to waste the other packs. You know, like I, I, it comes with different colors and you know, I'm, I don't really, I'm okay with any color. I like things colorful. You know what I mean? Yes. Is that okay? W knows what you mean. Yes. Rock on. Okay, so profitability. You guys had an amazing class with Mr. Brent. Is it Bashor? I don't know how to pronounce his name, but you had a great class with him and he talked about revenue, expenses. He talked about when you do a lemonade stand, you need to pay for the lemons. My daughter charged me $20 because she paid for this elastic band that's holding my mic to my chest, All right? Uh, so we, you guys learned this part. I have a question for you though. When you have profit, when you have extra cash after selling, what can you do with that money? Use it to buy more lemons, so more you lemons. get, so you can make more lemonade to make more money. Great. Uh, yeah, what else can you do? You can use it to get more supplies, so you can sell people. more and get even more money. Right. Who said more people? Me. Who's me? I don't see. Milo Pouliot. Oh, nice. Yes, more. You could you could hire more people. And you guys asked a real good question last time, which was, how could you have avoided what happened with the coronavirus? Do you guys remember asking that question? You could prepare for the worst. Yeah, you could prepare for it. And the thing is, Mr. Brashore said the, the right thing. No one expected this to happen. Like it's, it's, an, it's just crazy what's been happening these days, right? So how could you avoid it? Well, profit. Profit helped you with that. 
because with profit, you know that everything goes up and down. So when it goes down, you want to also make sure you have cash so you could ride through this crazy down until it gets back up. The other reason you want to have profit so you could prepare for the downtime is when things are like really bad in the economy, that's when there's a lot of problems, right? And with a lot of problems, we might find some of the problems interesting and we might feel like, hey, I really want to solve this problem. Well, if you have profit for years and years, and you save some of that money, you could invest in solving some of these problems. Maybe it's not you. Maybe, maybe Milo might want to invest in someone else's business in here that's going to work and maybe throw a few dollars there, right? So that's the power of profit is if, you're, if you make money and you spend it right and you save it right, then you could be prepared for potentially the worst. And some people are trying to prepare and even that it didn't help. But that's profitability, right? To solve profitably is to make sure revenue minus expenses is positive and that you know what to do with that profit, right? You could donate to charity, that's what I do. I always wanna give back to the people that help me. And so I love to do that and help others, help the environment, help animals. Next is solve a problem. So is a problem bad, guys? Like when you think of a problem, does it? It does depends it... on the problem. No. What's if that? You don't, if you have too much food, that's a good problem. If you don't have enough food, that's a bad problem. Right, right. There's good problems and bad problems. Like exactly, first world problem and, and developing country problem. You are so right. But what if you're an entrepreneur? What if you're an entrepreneur? How do you define a problem? Something that can be solved. Right, exactly. It's an opportunity for us, right? And so let me teach you something that I do with my kids. Peony is like, just she's gone upstairs and I call her down, but that's okay. Actually, what time is it? Oh, well, if you call her down, she might charge you for interrupting her homework. That's right. Oh my goodness, you're so right. And she's also gone to school to pick up all her stuff. Like you're supposed to get your stuff from your locker. So she already left to school, but this is what she has upstairs. She has what we call a problem and gratitude journal. And since she was 10 years old, so when she was 10, I gave her this handmade journal and every night she would write a problem that she would love to be solved. Doesn't mean she's gonna solve it, but she's starting to recognize problems as opportunities. She starts looking around and write problems. And I remember in grade five, which is when she got the, the, uh, the album, the, the, the journal, grade five going to grade six, there was an end of year party. And she went the next day and she's a bit of a neat freak. So she, she goes to school and there's pizza boxes and it wasn't cleaned up. And she said, I know what I'm putting in my, my prom journal tonight. There has to be a better way to clean the school after a party, right? She also noticed that people are not as positive because she's super positive. I mean, I'm not sure you got it from her earlier, but she's really fun. She's like creative and she just loves people to be happy. She always wants people to smile. And she says, you know, there's not enough positivity in this world. I remember she wrote that down. And then gratitude. I think a lot of people know gratitude, but it's just really important to know what we're grateful for. I'm grateful for this moment to be here with you guys. I'm grateful that I have amazing children. Well, children, period. Children are amazing. I'm grateful that my mother is, is, is talking to me twice a day. I'm grateful that because of COVID, I get to talk to my mom at least twice a day, right? Before I didn't only talk to her maybe once, once a day, because she lives in Montreal, by the way. So I had to call her through Skype or some, now we do a Zoom call with the family, right? So in our journal, we always write problem and gratitude journal. Here's something else we do. We like to go out to the, into the city, we drive around and we find one of those strip malls or somewhere where there's a for lease sign, a place for rent. And we would sit there and we would map out what kind of business we would put in there, right? And so my daughter, I have another daughter that's 17 years old. I have a daughter that's 14 that you met. And my son that's eight. I have a question. And it's really, yes. Does your other daughter charge you? Or does, uh, is it the only one? Or oh, they the all charge me. Yeah, they all charge me. Yeah, yeah, but it's, they only charge me if they what? Solve one of your problems. Solve a problem for you. Yeah, solve and a problem. Do, that and by doing interrupting their work, you have to pay more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
sometimes she, she interrupts her work. She comes down and solves me a problem, but that problem wasn't, you know, I didn't feel it was worth it. So we would argue over it and then guess what? She has to go back upstairs and think about a better solution, right? So sometimes you come up with a solution. It doesn't mean it deserves money. Sometimes like this is pretty good because I get to continue. Look at that brilliant. Oh yeah. Nice. There you go. See, so it doesn't, because it's elastic, my circulation, you know, I can still move my arms, right? I can move. So, so that problem, I think her solution was, was worth paying the money. Right. But sometimes they, they give me a solution. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you got to do better than that. Right. So a solution does not guarantee money. That's why in the beginning it says that people are able or able and eager to pay you. Right. So you have to make your solution good enough so people can pay you, which actually will take us to a, pro a part later on. So remember, solve a problem. You guys, there's lots of amazing opportunities for you to train your mind to find problems as opportunities. And eventually you're going to find something really, really powerful. You'll see. Okay. Next is that people experience, right? And so the question is, how do you know if a problem you identified is experienced? How do we know that people are experiencing pollution? They can tell you. Right. They can tell you. Where can you go to find this information? You can ask them. You can look at maps of areas that have pollution. Great. Surveys, right? Surveys. You could ask them. You could see if, you're, if you come up with a lemonade as an idea, you could see if lemonade is being sold or not. If lemonade is being sold, that means someone thinks lemonade is a good business, right? And what problem does a lemonade solve? of having a drink that isn't milk or water. Exactly. Uh, having and a refreshing drink. Refreshing, yeah. It solves thirst. Having right? a sugary drink. It is sugary, yeah. Can you drink lemonade without sugar? Yeah, yeah but, but I don't it, really want it to. It would figuratively <laughs> be lemonade. Right, figuratively. Got it. Well, don't lemons have sugar in them already? Uh, lemon um, does have that's some form natural, of sugar. Sugar. natural organic sugar. Yes, natural sugar is good. Yeah, so yeah. yes, it already has sugar in it. Sugarless you know, lemonade is impossible. This is a good question to send over to Miss uh, Tracy Townsend. You know, she did the biology workshop, she knows this way better than me. So, um, but look at uh, other options. Look at this, guys. You know, you could even go to YouTube or, or read a blog, look at the news. That's how you could find if some problems exist. So I'll give you an example. My son is, he plays Minecraft. Anyone here play Minecraft? Yeah, oh, we do yeah. Minecraft Dungeons. <laughs> I play Minecraft and Minecraft Dungeons. No. Yeah. Uh, Only my friend's house. All right. So I'm going to share screen here. And, uh, and so you guys could see a little something something here. Because uh, my son, for example, he watches a YouTube channel called Preston Plays. Does anyone, does that ring a bell? Yes, it does it, ring a bell. It, I watch it's it It's in my recommended too. list a lot, but I never watch it. I see. So, I watch it a lot. Yeah, so my son has a problem because he sees all these cool characters. He asked me, he goes, Dad, I have a problem. I said, what's the problem, buddy? And he says, Dad, uh, I look at all these YouTube videos and I want to know how to create those characters. Preston does not teach me how to make those cool characters. So then we went to YouTube and we did a search. Look at this, how to build, look at that, characters in Minecraft. You guys see this? Look at this, 111,000 views, 222,000 views. Oh, wait, look at this, look at this, look at these, oh, look at this one, 558,000 views. Right, and 2.5 million views. Yeah, 2.5 million views. That means this problem is a real problem, and people are trying to solve it. If there was like one view or no views, which means it wouldn't even come up, right? Then that's probably a problem people aren't looking to solve, or it doesn't really exist, right? And 
I'm his father and I know he really loves Minecraft and I like that it builds creativity. And I saw this, this, this camp, this camp for Minecraft. So I thought this was pretty cool and it's a business. What do you think this camp, this camp, how does it, what problem does it solve for me? What problem do you think this camp solves for me? You and don't myself? have to take care of your kids. Right, exactly. That's one. I, I could just know that someone's taking care of him so I could go to work and work on my business. What else? What else does this camp do for me? So then he can figure out an answer to his problem. Right. Do you think I know how to build a Minecraft character? No, so the camp will help it. So you don't have to do it yourself. Because exactly. you don't know how to. Yeah, so my problem is I want my son to be better at creating what he sees. But my problem is I don't know how to build it. So I found a business that does this for me and I'm going to pay them eagerly because it's going to make all our lives a win-win situation. I get to go work on my business. My son grows. He learns how to be creative. And then the business gets my money so they could get profit so they could reinvest it. Like one of you said, buy more, pay more people, buy more, materials, maybe more server space to, to have more kids take the program, right? So there's amazing things when you have a great business that everybody wins. So that's how you know if someone has the actual problem or not. You could do better research and find if they have the problem and then you could be research and find how big the problem is, like 2.5 million views on how to build a Spider-Man character. That's pretty cool. That means that there's 2.5 million people trying to figure it out. I think that's a big opportunity. What do you think? I see some head nods, which is good enough for me. Awesome. Now, what's I have a question. What's that? Why aren't the sticky notes the same color this time? Well, the other one, I ran out of these. See, I ran out of these ones, and then I had to check another one. So, but next time when we do series two, I'm going to use all the same color or I might just use all different colors. We'll see how I feel. Whatever I find interesting, I'll do it. So interesting is fun. Things that are passionate, things that are challenging, things that time flies, things that you're curious about. So um, who's W? MW. Hi, I'm w. w. Oh, you're W. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm W. Okay, W. Got it. Um, I didn't what, put two U's there, though. That's very smart. That's very smart. Uh, what do you? Uh, what are you curious about these days? Or what do you do that makes time that time fly so quickly? Like already, that went by fast. Video games. Video games, okay. I mean, that's, that's a fair answer. Uh, and do you hate it, like dislike it when you have to stop playing video games? Yes. Yes, of course, right? And uh, High Tech Rowan, what do you like to do? I like to play video games, make video games. Make video games too. And, and put you, them on YouTube. And, and I like record video games. Nice. <laughs> I like to um, search for reptiles, research reptiles, and talk about reptiles. Fantastic. And, and is this something you could do for a long time? Like, you, do, you, do you enjoy it that much? You could just keep doing it? Yes. I could do it for 20, I could do it 24 7, but I run out of sleep and I'd be very grumpy. Exactly. So 12, 12 hours a day for wow. 365 days. That's, that's amazing, actually. And I love hearing that because when you solve something interesting, you tend to just never give up. You just keep going and going and going. Maybe you're playing a game and you have to restart or you have to just keep going and going. When you find something interesting, you actually don't give up. Because when you run a business, do you think it's going to be smooth? Or do you think it's going to be like a lot of like, oh my goodness, all this thing's happening? Yes. 
right? Oh my goodness, all these things happening. Exactly. So like when I run a business, I know I'm going to face a lot of problems. So I want to make sure I, I solve a problem I find interesting, that I'm interested in it, that I'm curious. Because if I am, it drives my passion to just keep going and going, even though pow, pow, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Like it's, there's so many challenges, but I don't give up because I find it super interesting. Pretty cool. So that's another really important point. When you're thinking about a business, don't think about a business that could make money. Like it's like a good opportunity. It's really important that you feel connected to it with your, what's that? With your? Heart. I told you I'm not a good drawer. I told you. That's a heart, by the way. <laughs> That's so, what I said. It wasn't heart. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So again, we solve a problem that we find interesting because when we find it interesting, we never give up. We just keep going and going until we succeed. Right? Next is what's this? Super? Super power. Super power. With a lightning right. bolt in the middle. So I do this with my kids and I learn so much about my kids when we do this. All right. And superpower is defined by the word gift. G I F T G I F T and G stands for given by your loved ones. So mom, dad, grandfather, you know, teacher, uh, even your friends, right? These are the people who love you and they teach you stuff. So my father taught me, to help other people. He taught me to care for other people. My mother taught me to be very empathetic, to, to really be positive, right? That's my mom is like a positive energy. So there's all these things when I grew up, my, my loved ones taught me really amazing lessons. So the first part of your gift is G, given by your loved ones. Next is inside your heart, or a big word is innate. So, so, there's things that's inside of you, like double you. There's something inside of you. Yeah. All right. And for me, I grew up with my, I have a sister, I have a brother. We all were raised in the same house, but for some weird reason, I'm the one who goes out and volunteers for people. I'm the one who loves to gather people together and do things for other people and help other people. I'm the one who likes to be creative. I'm the one who loves dancing and music and musicals and, and you know, just creativity stuff like YouTube stuff. I'm really into video, right? Uh, my sister is different. She's re she just naturally analyzes things really, really well. I'm not great at analyzing, but cause it's not inside of me, right? So there's some things inside of us all that's part of our gift. Next is failures we achieved. So who knew, I, I, does everybody run here? Can everybody run? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what did you have to do before learning how to run? Walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before walking, what did you have to do? What were you doing? Crawling. Crawling. Exactly. So do you think you went from crawling to walking like instantly or did you have no. to fall a few times? I had to fall a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So funny thing is falling or failing is a great achievement. Every time I saw my son fall, I was so proud of him because it means he's trying and he's growing. And eventually, because he's so passionate, he really wants to run after, you know, a puppy across the street. He runs after the ball and he knew that crawling just wasn't fast enough. So he's so passionate about going after that little puppy, which my neighbor had the cutest puppy. He was so passionate. He just wanted to go after the puppy that he picked himself up and eventually he was able to walk. Then he realized that walking wasn't even fast enough. So he had to figure out how to run and he fell as he ran, he fell as he ran, but he was so passionate and interested about playing with a dog that he eventually learned how to run. So he never gave up even though he fell. So part of your superpower actually has everything to do with all the times you fell, whether it be in school, whether it be at home, whether we made a mistake, it's all an amazing life lesson. So it's why the most important word here is failures achieved, right? We achieve failures. That's the powerful thing. You know, I always see every failure as an achievement and it helps me learn the right lessons. And the last one is taught through learning. And learning could be at school, 
Learning could be going on YouTube and learning something interesting, right? So you learn a lot of things. And as you learn things, it becomes part of your gifts, becomes part of your superpower, right? And so this is the exercise we do at home, even as adults and with our kids. And I learned so much about my kids. I asked them, what did you spend today learning, right? What did you enjoy learning today? And she would tell me, like, I learned this, I learned that. My son would tell me, I learned this, I learned that. And it's so interesting to see what my children find interesting. And they think it's cool to, well, they don't think it's cool actually, but they also know what I find interesting, right? And so it's a really powerful way to know what your superpower is, right? All right, next here is, you see this here, Ace? Mm -hmm. oh, see these here? Mm -hmm. Ace. I'm gonna do a magic trick for you. Ah, it's gone. Pretty cool, huh? I know. I'm also. You just throw them to your side. <laughs> I just threw it away. I know you're too smart. <laughs> so every year I have an ace card. I do ace cards every three months, and uh, with Mr. Brent uh, Bashore, right? Bashore. Again, I don't know how to pronounce name, but with Brent, you know, he asked uh, um, who wanted the the software company. Someone wanted a software company. Rowan. 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 Oh, Rowan yeah. and Mac. So Rowan Mac, you guys wanted a software company and he asked you, can you start the software company next week? Do you guys remember what you answered? No? No, I don't. What's that? I don't remember. Okay. So, uh, so in there, I heard and one of you said, I need to learn how to program. Right. And so there's a lot of skills that we also need to learn over time to run some businesses that we want to run. So I create what's called the ACE card. And I always love to do this. So ACE, A stands for aptitude, which also means skills. What do I need to learn? What skills do I need to learn? Then I think about the community. I need some support, support. because I need support. You know, I, uh, I do video editing guys. So I do, and I use what's called Adobe Premiere Pro to edit. And so that's the aptitude I've been learning, but I need to talk to teachers or experts who are really good at this. So I reach out to people to make sure they can help me learn Adobe Premiere Pro. And last is enterprise, which take is a chance. take a chance. That's right. Take a risk. Right. And so I've been video editing and I just like, I just video edit and I just put it out there and it's, it's not great, but I took a chance and I did it. Right. So I learned the skills, aptitude. I found a group of people to help me learn it. And then I took a chance. I made a few videos and I gave it to my friends to say, yo guys, how can I do better? And they're the ones who helped me do better. Pretty cool. And then the last point here is capable and what's this word? Eager. Eager, to, Eager pay. to pay. Exactly. And so we're going to do this here. Do they have okay. access to pay? So first, do they have access and ability to pay? So Eager. Ergo yeah. to choice. Eager equals choice. Whose birthday is coming up soon? Not mine. mine. In November, so no. Okay. Not mine. Mine's in May. Ninja, when is yours? August. August. So what? May. Tell me. Tell me two things you would like for your birthday. A micro SD card for my Nintendo Switch. Okay. So let's write this down. Okay. Uh, there we go. So, a micro SD card. For SD my card, Nintendo yeah. Switch. And a switch, right? No, for my Nintendo Switch. Oh, I for have your one Switch. Already. And what else would you like other than an SD card? Hmm. Probably really big Star Wars Lego. Okay, <clears throat> so. Star Wars. Because I have no Lego to do right now. Okay. Star Wars. I have a huge tub. 
<laughs> Huge tub. Already. <laughs> nice. Me too. I could, sleep, I could sleep in it. It's so big. Oh my goodness. Must be comfortable to sleep on a whole box of Lego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, it, feels, it feels like it's little, little, you know. Um, my birthday is in May. So it's oh. really far away. Oh, oh okay. my birthday's um soon. It's less than a year. It's in May. Awesome. I know. It's just around the corner, right? Yeah. Mine's in May too. Same. Mine's in November. It's like a couple of days. Right. Mine's next. Mine's in two days, I think. Mm -hmm. My son's birthday is, is also in August. August 9th is his birthday. I'm My mom's is August 13th. I'm 23rd. I think we should do a co-celebration. That, that's going to be like Awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh, we we should we should do like a uh, Zoom call with all of us. That sounds like a plan. Does anybody DJ here? Can anyone DJ music? Yep. Oh, I can. Yep. Oh, no, I can. no, don't 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 trust Milo. He's gonna spam a Ghostbusters. Oh my goodness! I, or Mama Mia. Ghostbusters was back in my day, guys. So I to me, Ghostbusters is not spamming. It's awesome. No, yeah. no, that, that's I the love only. That's I'll play all the remixes. I'll play all 26 remixes. I think there's 26 of them. There are 26 Ghostbuster remixes? Probably. Wow. I uh, my favorite is the Living Tombstone remix. So is there is there room for a 27th remix? What do you think? Is it like is there a point? Probably. Is there a problem oh. that there's not enough? Oh, I, I, I could actually probably send my address and people could send me gifts. Or Mac and Will, since they live four, like four blocks away from me. Oh my goodness. Okay. Awesome. And then, and then yeah. Rowan's Plus as well, they can just drop off the gift on my first doorstep. <laughs> That's awesome. Three and a half. What's that? W? Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. <laughs> so, so Ninja Milne, Ninja Milne, I have a question for you. If if the SD card was a hundred dollars and the Lego was a hundred dollars and you only had one hundred dollars, which one would you choose? Um probably get his fault to pay half the price for both. <laughs> You'd have to wait for it to go on sale, but it might be all gone. So what if this is your only chance to it's get it? It's bother to pay half the price. It's true. Actually, I bet you these were used to be 200 but it's now down to 100 So Ninja Milne, which one would you choose? I, 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 do, I do a micro SD card because I can find the other Lego. Okay. And, and SD cards are actually pretty hard to find. I would choose putting, that, I would choose putting it in the bank. In the bank? That's great. Anyway, no, but I, I wouldn't be buying myself a gift. I don't know if people buy it. <laughs> Leverage. No. Well, no, that's going to be part guys, You guys are going ahead here because that was going to be leverage, which is in the part two of, these th of this like, whole entrepreneurship course, is getting other people to, to do for you instead and buy you things. You guys are way ahead. But if you notice, Ninja Milne, that um, uh, you chose one over the other, right? And this is where eager comes in. Eager is all about choice. So, you know, Pollution X, if you're making a business, you know, they may have other options instead, right? So there has to be a really good reason why they would be more eager to give you this money, their support to you to solve their pollution problems than someone else. Right, so in as a consumer, as a customer, we always have a choice. And what you hope is that your solution leverages your superpower, is something you're interested in, because you're gonna do everything you can in your power to create a solution that people are eager to choose you over someone else. So you guys wanna see uh, you know, a few things that my kids made for me, that they made money. Let's start with my eight-year-old. He noticed a problem. Uh, you know, Megan, I'm not sure about you, but uh, I lose my keys and my wallets. I never know where it is. So my son made this here, this contraption, and I put my wallet in there actually, and I put my keys, it hangs here, 
And I'm not kidding you, it sits in my front door every day since he made it. And, uh, and, uh, and he made money with this. He bargained with me, right? So it would, this is what it looks like. Okay, let me put it on. Boop. There you go. So my son made that for me. And he came and he bargained. And then after I showed it, four other people bought that exact same one from him because he only had enough pieces to make four. Then he made me this thing. See this weird thing out of Lego? But it's not weird because I have a window in front of me and I do the dishes and I love watching a YouTube video while doing the dishes. So he made this so I could put my phone in like that. But here's the funny thing. The phone kept falling out. The phone kept falling out when we, when we did a test, right? And so he made, he put on these little lock things, right? These little, these little antenna, can you guys see it? Let me see if I could turn it around a little bit. Yeah, right? I can so see it. That little antenna thing keeps the phone in. And actually I could also put my iPad on it because this is version two. Version one was just a phone. And then he put my iPad. And then if you notice, there's a slot right in the middle here. I put an extra battery in there and I could charge my phone while watching my video so I don't lose battery. So he did all this for me. My daughter, remember, she said she hates it when, like, well, not hates it, but she wants people to be more positive. So she created her own clothing line called Positive Vibes. She did this when she was 12 years old. And here's her hoodie. Here's the hoodie version of it. Right? And part two, we talk about marketing, actually, and how she found customers was, you went to all the popular people in sports, and we put all their names. So we had like one that says Rowan, for example, one that says W and we gave to them and say, Hey, here's your, here's your gear. And it said badminton or soccer in the back, the sport that they played. And so when the other teammates saw it, they're like, Oh, I want one too. So then all the teammates started ordering from them. Then they would go to a tournament against other schools. And then other school says, wow, you got really cool hoodies with like positive vibes in your name. So then they said, oh, one of our teammates made it. She's like in grade nine or whatever. She was grade eight at the time, right? Or was it seven? Oh my goodness, she was in grade seven at the time. So then they're like, oh, cool. And then they spoke to me and they said, can our school buy it? So she had a whole bunch of schools in Ottawa ordering positive vibes, sweatshirt, caps and hoodies. And she, they said this to her, when they wear it, they feel more positive. Pretty cool, huh? Then I have my nephew. Anyone play music here? Like piano a little um, bit? I do piano. And I, I do piano too. Great. Yes, so, I play get away with music. Awesome. I play get away with I play piano. Nice. That's awesome. So my, my, my nephew plays guitar and piano, and he was learning how to edit sound because he's creating his own beats, right? Excuse me. And so... He loves sound editing and guess what, like myself and Shane, Mr. Shane Parrish, we both have a podcast and we need our podcast to be edited. So my nephew, since he was 14 years old, edits my podcast, right? And it's a business and he has customers now all over the world and he does podcasts. He's now 17 and the guy rakes in $5,400 a month and he does it part time, but his passion is music. His passion is sound editing. He's really into it. So when he learned that he could edit people's interviews and make it clear, that was something he was really into. And he never thought that something like that could make him money. So he does. So that's what he does. My daughter, the 70 year old, we both wear glasses. And the problem that she wrote one day in her problem journal was she had the worst experience buying glasses. Why? Because if you look at my side here, I have a nose to keep the glasses. But my daughter's face is a bit more flat, fat, flat, and she has these cute little cheeks. And so the glasses can't sit on her nose. And it's so frustrating. So her and my other nephew, Kevin, he's a programmer. They're going to take a phone. They're going to create an app. And they, you could scan your face like this, scan your face like this. It identifies the shape of your face. And then it, it gives you the glasses that fit your face. And you could customize your glasses. And two weeks later, you get a brand new pair of glasses that fits your face. That's my seven year old daughter, right? All this came from a problem we were passionate about. And then my, cousin, my nephew had the programming skills 
and they came together and this is the app they're building. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So our kids have a lot of fun. Going back to the very first line here, our kids have a lot of fun doing this. Our kids have a lot of fun trying to figure out how to profitably solve a problem that people experience in which they find interesting that they have the superpower to solve that people are capable and eager to pay for. Pretty cool. And when she went online about the whole glasses thing, there's all these people complaining and complaining, complaining, but there was no solution. So she says, cool, I'm going to build a solution and I'm going to show the solution on YouTube and then tag all those people and mention them, check out this website, check out this YouTube video. We got an app coming out that's going to help you have that experience of buying glasses way more effective, right? So I'm going to land the plane here, guys, because my time is almost up. And uh, I want to save a bit of room in case you have questions. You still have seven minutes, Steph. I know, I know. But, you know, I, I want to go through what you can do next, right? So here's a few things you guys can try to do. First is start a problem and gratitude journal. And find a journal that really is cool for you. My son's journal, has a Minecraft, it's a Minecraft journal. Right, so he loves writing in it and it's amazing. And his pencil is a Minecraft pencil too. The guy is just crazy about Minecraft and it's amazing because he's so creative. He's so interested. In fact, he offered me something. You guys tell me, should I give him money? But I have a Minecraft account and I'm not very good, but he said he's gonna build a house for me. He's going to interview me, find out what's important and he's gonna build a house, my house for me in my Minecraft account and he's gonna charge me for it because he knows I can't do it. Should I pay him? What kind of question should I ask him? Um, you should ask him how big the house is. Right, so the bigger, the more money, or only if it's big, then I'll pay him. Yeah, only if it's big, you'll pay him. Okay, okay. And the color, if it's only one color, that's probably gonna get boring. Right, so lots, so lots of colors, so it could be interesting, like my post-it notes. Lots of colors, right? <laughs> So, so great. I will definitely keep, th these are great tips by the way, cause I didn't think about this. So it's gotta be big, lots of colors. So it doesn't get boring. Any, one last tip. Can you give me one last tip I could negotiate with my son? Um, it has to be like um, proof. It has like to you be. You could put set up traps. Set up traps, right? Cause there's monsters Wait, or something, right? Or make zombies. it so when you, tell him to make it so when you push a button, it opens the door. Oh, okay. And have lava surrounding the house when you flip a lever. Very cool. Guys, my son's house, he put a roller coaster in the basement. <laughs> I know. Uh, one day I'll record and show it to you guys. I don't know how he does it. So one is problem gratitude. Uh, well, yeah, I, I could probably do it, but his basement must be really big. Yeah, it's really big. When I saw it, I was like, wow. And then my son says, do you want me to build one for you, daddy? And I'm like, well, I don't want a roller coaster, but I might want something else. And he says, okay, tell me what you want. I'll make, an, I'll make it for you, uh, but you're gonna have to pay for it, <laughs> all right? So I wanna make sure I bargain with him. So I'm gonna use your tips. So I really appreciate that. So guys, number one, problem gratitude journal. Two, maybe pick a charity, something that, that really is important to you or your family or someone that you're close to. And maybe challenge yourself to figure out how you could raise money for a charity. Sometimes when you help people, this love for people and, the, and want to help people, it, it really fires your, your spirit up and you become more creative than ever before. So maybe try to see if there's a charity you might want to help and, and come up with a cool idea that you can raise money. There's a gift exercise, you know, given by your loved ones inside your heart, failures you achieved and taught through learning. So kind of write down and talk about all these little things that make your superpower. Next is the ACE card. What skills should you try to learn? Just to see if you can learn it, make sure you have a community C so people can help you learn it and then take a shot, take a chance and run with that new skill. It could be photo, it could be building a website on Wix. It could be, I know some of you are doing programming lessons, I think, or Code Academy. I'm or building a website on WordPress. Oh, nice. WordPress is not an easy thing to do. I do stuff on WordPress. And, uh, and even I get stuck in it, right? And so 
maybe it's taking your WordPress game on a whole new level. So it's finding people who are really good at WordPress to help you create a brand new or a, a more improved version of your site. Next is research and tests. Remember we search on YouTube, how to build a character in Minecraft. So when you have some ideas through your problem, through your problem, it's really good to do some research. One of you said, ask people if they have this problem. That's a great way to do it as well. And the last one is play with Lego. That's right. Play with Lego. I'm recommending you to play with Lego. That's a really good thing. I to play do. with it all the damn time, every day. <laughs> no, but as you can see, when I ask my son to play with Lego, it's not just play with Lego, but it's to come up with something really cool that solves a problem. 